Scholars, now we are moving towards our sixth school of thought, that is learning school of thought. So far, if you remember that, we have talked about the deliberate strategy, the, the intended strategy which is realized. And our learning so far is that that strategy is not only something in the shape of a plan or intention. There is a possibility that a strategy can emerge and root. It means that it is possible that without any intention, an organization starts working. And while working, as it faces different challenges, as it faces different opportunities, it develops its strategies accordingly to cope with the challenges and to avail the opportunities. This sixth school, which is the learning school, its name clearly shows that strategy is not only an intended process, rather is a learning process as well. Learning process in the sense that you learn as you move on your path. So the crux or the central message of this particular school of thought is that it is not always that you have a strategy in your mind before you start walking on the path. Rather, there is a possibility that you develop a strategy as you move on the path. Let us now see that what are different concerns and different parts in the learning school. According to this school, strategies emerge as people sometimes acting individually, but more often collectively come to learn about a situation as well as their organization's capability of dealing with it. This is what I've just elaborated before you, that people individually or collectively, when they move on and they know about two things, they know about the situation and they know about the capability of their organizations. And based on the match between the capability of the organization and the given situation, they simply develop a route, they develop a plan, they develop a strategy, they develop an action. And this action then emerges as their strategy on the path. According to Leprer 1980, strategic management becomes no longer just the management of change, but management by change. This is very, very important thing to understand that management of change. Yes, it is true that in the strategic management, our basic assumption was that as we are to face a dynamic environment, a changing environment, as environment changes, we have to change. And because of that change, we manage. And that change management becomes our strategy. But he has pointed out something which is not normal. And that is, it is not always management of change. It you manage a change. Rather, this is always management by change. Yet you are managed by the change. You are not only managing the change, but change is also managing you. What does it actually mean? It means that sometimes it happens that you predict something, you plan accordingly, and you try to deal. But it also happens, since our environment is not always predictable, it is many times unpredictable phenomena, unpredictable things. When it is unpredictable, this is possible that you do what actually you do not want to do. If you are given choice as intention, you don't do this. But the environment drags you towards a path. This is actually a management by change, not only management of change. And this is very important. Under the learning school, which is put forward mainly by Henry Mintzberg, but there are a number of scholars who have contributed to this school will be learning as we proceed in this particular school. But there is a basic change, basic contrast between this school and other schools, especially the initial schools of strategy. Then this is formation of versus 
formulation you know that under the design school planning and positioning school we learned that strategy is formulated first and then it is implemented this is the concept of the logical school the concept of the intended school or the concept of the design school that strategies formulation and its implementation are two different phases are two different processes or rather two different parts of the one process that first you formulate a strategy and then you implement that strategy and those who formulate the strategy are necessarily different from those who implement the strategy but this school argues that this is not always true that a strategy is formulated rather a strategy can form or can emerge and root on the path actually the question before henry mintzberg was that that what is the actual form of strategy it means that how actually strategies are formed in the organizations before his work or rather before he paid attention to the phenomena mostly the strategic management was of theoretical nature it was of normative nature prescriptive nature that what should be he is the person actually who put forward the descriptive form of the strategy and the main difference between description of the strategy and the prescri- prescription of the strategy is the formulation and the form- formation difference formulation mean that first you develop a strategy then it is implemented formation says that it is not always true there can be multiple forms of strategy development in the real world organizations and actually the strategy in most of the cases is the pattern which is found in the string of decisions which are taken in organization what do i mean to say i mean to say that in the organization organizations travel and on a path and on the path as they face different challenges and find different opportunities they act accordingly and after certain period of time there forms a strategy so there is now a shift from the formulation of strategy to the formation of strategy there is a fact supporting this particular school of thought that according to walter kitchell 1984 only 10% of formulated strategies actually got implemented a figure tom peters called wildly inflated so there was a gentleman kitchell who argued that in his observation in his finding that there were only 10% formulated strategies which were actually implemented and remaining 90% were never implemented rather according to mintzberg's category these were unrealized strategies so there was only 10% deliberate strategies so and even this 10% is a very precise figure on the on the strategy development but you see that and there's another philosopher uh, peters who even declared this 10% as wildly inflated in his opinion even that this number is not 10% which is actually implemented if it is the fact then what actually happens and you can clearly see that there is diagrammatically a display of difference between deliberately formulated strategy and emergently formed strategy you can see that in the deliberately formulated strategy there is a difference first people are thinking in the diagram they are developing a strategy before implementation whereas on the other diagram which is for the formation and emergence there is a spiral type emergence so rather this shows that strategy emerges and root on the path of the organization given the fact that only 10% of the strategies which are formulated are actually implemented there are two questions which are required to be answered what goes wrong with 90% of the organization strategies then and how organizations actually work if it is true that the 90% of the intended strategies are never realized then what goes wrong to those 90% of the strategies which are formulated 
And if it is the case, then how actually organizations work? The answer is provided by the learning school. Learning school believes that, that it is never possible that our environment is always favorable and it is always predictable. Actually, even when we start our journey in the organizations, whatever is the type of organization or whatever is the type of or kind of individual we are considering here in the strategy formation or formulation process, what happens that when you predict the environment, you plan accordingly, but when you actually start walking on the path, the environment as it is dynamic, it changes. Sometimes it changes on one part, the environment changes and on the other part, on the path, you get evolution, you get more maturity and you find out more feasible and viable opportunities to attain your objectives. So you skip what is already planned and you just find out new strategies. These are the strategies which actually emerge on the path and this is how organizations actually work in the real life. Conclusively, we say that, that organizations are the learning beings as the individuals are. And the strategy development is also a learning process. It is not a rigid process. And actually, in the organizations, rigidity cannot work. So organizations like the individuals and the other entities in the universe, they learn over the time. And as they learn, they change they modify or they adopt the new strategies for ensuring their existence, survival and growth in the organizations. Thank you very much.